Hello everyone, so today we're going to be taking a look at the facelifted 2015 Kia Seed and today's review is taking place at Heron Auto, situated in Donegal Town, County Donegal. For all contact information in regards to dealership, please see the description box below. So today I'm going to be bringing the Kia Seed on a test drive, but first off we're just going to take a look at some of the changes done to the car inside and out. So it's got a nicely designed key fob, nice and slim. And as you can see here, when you lock and unlock the vehicle, the exterior mirrors power fold. So starting with the front, it's got a new front bumper. And as you can see, one of the changes is around the fog lights. They've altered the chrome trim. Looks really good. And also the Tiger Nose front grille has been given a bit of a honeycomb design now, which looks quite nice. And also, as you can see by the design of the grill, they've actually implemented that this overall design to the top of the windscreen here. Other changes include these new 16-inch alloy wheels, which look really, really nice. Very cool design. And they've also fitted this one with the front wind deflectors. I believe these are an optional extra from the factory. Apart from the wind deflectors, everything you're about to see in this car comes as standard on this mid-range EX model, which is the best selling of the seed range. Other changes, the uh, brake lights are now LEDs. They've also changed the rear bumpers. And this one also has the rear parking sensors. Nice polished exhaust tip as well. And the boot space in this car is very good as well. It's got 380 litres of room. Really nice. And also underneath the boot floor, you got these individual uh, storage trays, as you can see here. And you also got a wee net there, standard. And also underneath the um, trays there is a space saver wheel. And the net, in case you're wondering, clips into these uh, four uh, points in the boot. So there's one there, one at the top. And the same over on that side and down here. I also got some nice uh, chrome trim going around the window frames. Other changes uh, made to the 2015 update is you now get uh, these uh, leather door panels uh, standard on the EX and it also comes standard with this lovely uh, black piano glass veneer finish which we'll also see in the front of the car and they also changed the seats as well so now there's a bit of a black and white uh, two-tone fabric design going on here really really nice and the legroom in the back of this car is excellent and so is the headroom it's a very roomy and spacious vehicle and also you get a center armrest with two cup holders a lot of room in this every bit as spacious as the equivalent Volkswagen Golf or Ford Focus so coming into the front you got your four electric windows all of which are fully automatic Good bit of storage in the door bins. So we'll just turn on the power. So standard features in the mid-range EX include power folding exterior mirrors. Now when the button is set in the center here, it means it's in automatic, which means when you lock and unlock the vehicle, as I was showing you, they'll um, power fold. You can also do it manually. And push it all the way up to fold them back out. So I'm actually going to power on the engine to demonstrate some of these features. We're going to start off with the steering wheel. It's an electric rack and pinion. So as you guys will have seen when I originally reviewed the seat in 2012, the preface of the model, I uh, showed you a lot of the interior features, but we'll just briefly run over them again. So you got your cruise control located here. You got this the, these buttons here for the trip computer in the center. 
and you got your Bluetooth and voice commands and your volume controls for the radio. Then you got this button here, it has three adjustable steering weights. So at the moment, the steering weight is in normal. If I press it again, it'll go into sport mode, which is the heaviest setting. This is what you would use for driving on, you know, uh, dual carriageways and whatnot. So that's its heaviest setting. And then when you put it on the comfort, it's super light. So this is the kind of setting we'd use for going into tight parking spaces or maneuvering around tight corners or maybe driving on country roads. As you can see, it's super light. You can actually rotate it with just one finger. So that's a really nice setting. But I think for the majority of the time, you're just gonna have it in normal. So other standard features include the automatic headlights. Now these are by Xenon projector headlamps with the LED running daylights, which I mentioned. It's got a lovely leather wrap and it's also got the black piano glass veneer finish I was talking about, which can also be found around the radio. And it continues on over here. Very nice gauges as well. And it also comes with this very nice radio. Good sound quality from it. And also you can have the radio running and if you press this button here, it'll just turn off the light. Now you can easily turn the light on by pressing this or just adjusting radio itself. Um, you got your basic controls here for selecting between the radio, the Bluetooth. The Bluetooth in this car is extremely easy to use. You just uh, press that, hit OK, and then you put in that passkey, which is four zeros in your phone, and there you go, it's paired. Extremely simple. And then you got media for things such as your USB and auxiliary plugins. You also got your two 12 volt power outlets down there, uh, your main setup for the car, and just you know your scan for the radio stations. Then you got these controls up here, which adjust the clock located up there in the center. Very nicely displayed. You got your time and date as well as your outside temperature meter reading. And then coming down here, you got your standard air conditioning controls. You got your traction control, your central locking. You got this nice uh, rubber padding here for storage. So as you can see, I got my GoPro remote there and it won't slide around when driving. And then this car also comes standard with a six-speed manual gearbox. You can activate and deactivate the parking sensors with this button here. You got uh, two integrated cup holders. This one is removable. Lovely leather wrap e-brake instead of you know, the electronic parking brake, which you actually do get a standard on the high-spec Platinum model, which is the next one up from the EX. You also got this lovely center armrest with a very deep storage area. It's just got a very, very nice interior. You also got the microphone up here for the Bluetooth, of course. And in here you got a padded sunglasses container, your standard interior lighting. I really love these new seats. They look really nice and they are very comfortable. I was driving this car for a little while before I started filming this. And I really, really do like the uh, leather there, you know, putting a standard on the EX now. Usually you only got this in high spec uh, platinum model. So it's got these very nice chrome door handles. So the interior of this car feels very out of market, very um, well thought out, and it actually is really well thought out. I mean, if you just look at the dash here, it actually reminds me of a Mark 1 Ford Focus, the way the lines are coordinated and everything faces the driver. And you also got nice little features like the front quarter windows as well, just to help with your overall uh, visibility. And as you can see, it's got a very large rear window as well. So all around visibility in this car is excellent. So we're just going to cut over to cut over sorry to some test drive footage now. Okay, so some basic information on the seat. Uh, this is the second generation, which came out in 2012, which is when I first done my uh, in-depth review of it. Um, I also done a test drive of a base model 1.4 petrol um, about two years ago, which I liked very much. So today we're in the 1.4 liter diesel and some mid-range EX, which as I was saying earlier, is the best selling of range. So this engine, it's, it's really nice, so it's actually, it's not the most powerful one, the 1.7 liter diesel is. Uh, this puts out 90 horsepower, has a top speed of 106 miles per hour, and it also produces about 152 foot-pounds of torque or thereabouts. And key claim this car can do about 68 miles a gallon. Now, I've been driving this car for a little while before I started filming, and in the four years I've been doing car reviews and driving dozens and dozens of cars, I can easily say that this Kia Seat is one of the nicest cars I've driven to date. I mean, I've always praised Kia, you know, for cars in recent years, and this Kia Seat is, you know, the very definition of why I think they're so good. I mean, this mid-range EX comes with more standard equipment than the equivalent Volkswagen Golf or Ford Focus. I mean, 
neither of them cars offer, you know, for example, uh, the adjustable steering weight as standard on their lower spec models. You do get it, I believe, in their higher spec models, but when you get up to them higher spec models, you're paying a lot more than you would for this mid-range EX seat. Um, as far as pricing goes, I'll actually list that in the description box below, but I don't have it at the top of my head at the moment. But I do love the interior of this car, so I do. It is so, so, or such a nice design, so it is. I really like the way they've done the dash, the way it's, you know, driver focused. I love all the equipment, I love all the dials. It's such a lovely layout, and the all round visibility in this car is excellent. It's got a very big windscreen, you've got your front quarter windows, it's got a very large rear window. I mean, it's just such a lovely, quiet, comfortable, relaxing place to sit, so it is. Um, but it's uh, it's a great little car, so it is. That's I'm gonna say for you know the very first half of this review. Okay, so let's see about the power. We're in third gear now, coming up to 60 kilometers an hour, foot down. Turbo kicks in a little over 2,000 RPM, and there we are at 60 miles per hour. It's a good little engine, so it is. It has quite a good amount of pull in it. I mean. I'd imagine 1.7 liter diesel will be a hell of a lot faster than this, but even this 1.4 has very good acceleration. It's not a slow or sluggish car. And the road tax in this is only 190 euros, so it is. It's extremely cheap road tax, so it is. It's, um, it's got very good pulling power. I'm in sixth gear now, going uphill if I drop it down to fifth. And you can feel the power coming in from that turbo now at 2,500 RPM. Wow. It's really nice to drive, so it is. Uh, but this car is actually very quiet as well to drive along. Now, these are front wind deflectors, or only after being fitted, so there's a little bit of noise going over them. But for the most part, this is a very, very quiet interior, so it is. And these new seats are very nice as well. They're very, very comfortable, so they are to sit in. The driving position there is, is very good. I mean, I could easily drive this car in a long distance journey, and I'd be comfortable and relaxed the whole way there and you'd be getting very good fuel economy as well I mean I imagine this car will easily do probably about 60 miles a gallon as you know factory MPG is never completely accurate but um, this here 1.4 diesel will probably be the most economical version of the seat okay so we're out in much bumpier back roads now we're coming around to some tight corners so we'll see what the steering feels like in its lightest setting at the moment though I can confirm that's going over these bumps quite well but they're going to get a heck of a lot bump here in just a moment. So we're coming up to our first tight corner. Yep, just went in there very nicely so it did. Very little uh, in the way of body roll, that's another thing I was to mention. But the steering feedback is very very nice. I mean a lot of people say these days you know that they do prefer the old traditional hydraulic rack and pinion power assist but I think that really kind of depends on the car you're driving. In the car like the Kia C, the electric steering is just fine and it feels nice. Another tight right-hander here. Yeah, and the car corner is flat and level and into the straight now. And the car just pulls away, so it does. But, um, yeah, so at the moment I really enjoy driving the seats, so I do. I mean, I've driven a lot of the equivalent hatchbacks. Um, I haven't filmed it, but I have driven some Golfs over the years. Um, I've driven the Ford Focus. I mean, those cars are in the same kind of range as the seat. And I just think this feels and looks much nicer than the Mark 7 Golf. I mean, going over these bumpy bits now, you probably can't see it very well on camera, but it, the seat is soaking them up very nicely. Now, some people might think I'm nuts for saying, you know, Kia seat it looks nicer than the Volkswagen Golf Mark 7, but I actually think it does, because to me, the Mark 7 Golf has always looked like nothing more than just a face of the Mark 6. The Kia Seed here, this second generation, is completely different in every single way, shape and form, to the first generation. It's a completely different car, and it just offers so much more standard, and I just think the overall interior has a much nicer design to the Golf. Um, I mean, a couple of weeks ago, I started driving you know, the last generation of the Audi A3, which underneath is a Golf, and I complained that the interior of that car didn't feel and look, you know, very um, nice. I thought it was kind of an old-fashioned design that I'd even stick with for well over 10 years. Um, but for the same kind of price, you can get this, and it's just got such a modern, updated look to it, and I just think it's so, so much nicer, so it is. Okay, so we're just going to finish up the review now. Uh, just some more additional details. There are three trim levels to choose from. You can have a base model TX, the mid-range EX, which we have here, which as I was saying is the best selling of the range, 
and then there's the high spec luxurious platinum model which uh, comes with a panoramic sunroof and it also comes with a, a feature which um, will allow the car to automatically steer into a parking space you just operate the pedals which is you know a very nice uh, cool modern day you know system um, just makes parking that little bit easier um, I've never actually used it but I would love to use it sometime just to see what it's like uh, other things, Kia of course these days offer all the cars with a with the 7 year warranty or 150,000 kilometers I believe it is. Um, you can also have this as the 3 door sportier Pro C model, you can have this as a 5 door state and Kia have also brought out a high performance version of the 5 door and 3 door, it's called the GT version so in the case of this car it would be the CGT and the 3 door would be the Pro C GT. It features a turbocharged 1.6 litre petrol engine and I believe it puts out something like 197 horsepower so roughly around the same as the Toyota GT86. Now I've seen the GT models, I actually saw a GT1 a few months ago parked up in town, it was in red and it just looks really really nice, the body kit looks great on it, the interior looks really nice. So um, as usual I'll list the pricing and the dealership information in the description box below. Uh, but overall, I think you guys already know what I think of the seat. It's just such a lovely car. I really genuinely can't think of any faults with it whatsoever. It looks fantastic. It's very well built and it comes with excellent standard equipment. Um, all engines are very economical as well. So, you know, I can't think of anything wrong with this car to be honest with you guys. A uh, car I would highly recommend anyway for anyone who's looking for a well-priced, economical, spacious little hatchback that comes with decent modern day equipment, you can easily get that even in the base model. Uh, but if you know, you're looking to spend a little extra, I'd say definitely get this mid-range AX, you will not be disappointed. So guys, thanks for watching, stay tuned and uh, play more reviews to come in the future.